rapid fire. Week two, college football. Michigan, 28, 56 and a half against Western Michigan. They're in the big house. Their next three games are at home before they go to Northwestern. Lost by seven at Notre Dame. Why well, you have to love the polls? They drop seven spots. That would never happen to an SEC team. Unbelievable. They lose to a top 15 team on the road and drop seven spots. In any event, will they take out some of their frustration on Western Michigan? The uh, Pat Hamilton had a bad job with a conservative game plan in the first half. Western Michigan gave up 50 plus to Syracuse at home, but after a, a, a horrible first half, they turned it on in the second half offensively and had three quick touchdowns and moved the ball, scored 42 points against Syracuse, but didn't get the money as they gave up 55. Will Michigan's defense be, keep them in check? And I know, Teddy, you think they can cover this number. Oh, yeah. Wolverine, I mean, look, you call me a home. I, I rarely bet on Michigan, only when the circumstances uh, are in play. But this is absolutely a Wolverines blowout spot. Western Michigan had five all-MAC defenders last year. All five of those guys graduated. Syracuse yeah. scored on every drive that they wanted to score. I think Michigan yeah. has the potential to put up points in bunches. The only question is whether the Broncos are going to be able to trade points with the Wolverines like they were able to do with Syracuse last week. But were they really? Again, if you watch the game, you saw what happened. They, hit, they broke a couple of big plays. Bang, bang, bang. I think there was three of them. They had an 84-yard touchdown, a 64-yard touchdown. I'll take the under on big play touchdowns against the Wolverines this weekend. I think Harbaugh's going to have them in a feisty mood at the big house. I will not step in front of Michigan this week as Wolverines are pass for this better. All right. You can find a 27 and a half out there as well. Good game. Mississippi State at Kansas State. Kansas State, lucky to win last week against South Dakota, although uh, they're pretty good uh, in FCS. Nine and 54 on the road. You want Snyder as a dog. He's tremendous. Nine and three ATS is a home dog since 2011. And this from Mark Lawrence, 37 and three straight up at home when undefeated against a non-conference foe. Only one loss by more than seven points. What could hurt Mississippi State? And we love Moorhead, their head coach who came over from Penn State. Uh, they're off a cupcake. Also, Fitzgerald, now after being suspended, didn't have that to get that one game under his belt. So we have to, he has to come in off the injury and play on a road against a pretty good K-State team against a live dog coach. Yeah, I mean, the one thing that K-State has done in these games where they've been home dogs, they've really, because the defense hasn't gotten stops. You know, we saw them last year, uh, they were dogs five times, and the defense has given up in the 30s or 40s in four of those games, and 26 in the fifth. But what they've been able to do is create offense. Now, they're running two quarterbacks uh, in Manhattan this year. Snyder has is expected to get both these guys in the game. Defensively, I wonder if they're going to be a step slow. Mississippi State expected to play very fast under Joe Moorhead in their first road test. And while Snyder's got the long-term track record, all the sharp money's on the Bulldogs. There's a lot of like here in Las Vegas mm. for Mississippi State coming into 2018. All right, interesting. I cannot make a case for a dog. the dog here. Oklahoma at home against UCLA, 30 and 64. Ran out Florida Atlantic last week, dropped a 60-burger on them. And UCLA was dreadful on offense. It's going to take a long time as Chip Kelly comes in with a new system and he doesn't have his players. Wilton Spate got hurt in the loss to Cincinnati. His status is up in the air while we tape. And if he doesn't go, I mean, they, the, the young kid, the freshman from Vegas, Bishop Gorman, got in the game last week. As Cincinnati won as a two-touch while well, the pen open 20, bet down to 14 and a half. Cincinnati with the outright upset on the road. I think Oklahoma can name their score in this one. In theory, they're supposed to be able to do that. But I'm going to give you two mitigating factors here and why I'm not betting the Sooners uh, on Saturday. One, this line opened 25 and immediately got steamed up. I mean, pew, 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 yeah. one bet after the next. It got pounded uh, on Sunday. So from a line value perspective, before this game's played last week, Oklahoma's less than three touchdowns. Now they're 30. So, you know, uh, that's not what I call necessarily value. Number two is that the one thing we saw last week, for UCLA in the loss to Cincinnati. They still have plenty of skill position talent. They do. They're not going to be outclassed by Oklahoma's size or speed. Florida Atlantic had a little bit of deer in the headlights look and had a really bad first half uh, last week. I'm not convinced that UCLA is going to go through those same difficulties as they go to uh, Norman, which makes me think this point spread not too, too, too high. Georgia 10, 56 and a half at South Carolina. Triple revenge for the Gamecocks. 
They played well last last year, hung in there and lost 24 to 10 on the road. Uh, they had a big step up. And I know uh, we have a mutual friend who thinks South Carolina is going to win this game. He's been saying it for three three months. And I would grab the 10. I think the dogs live in this one. Both teams off cupcakes last week. Yeah, I might lean it towards the Gamecocks as well. But in this point spread range, again, uh, South Carolina only played two real step up in class games last year. They played Georgia and Clemson. And they scored 10 and 10 in those two ball games and lost uh, mm-hmm. by 14 and by 24. Georgia's real. <laughs> all right. Say what you want. You know, all right, Jake Fromm, uh, whatever you want about the quarterback battle. There's not a weak positional group on the Bulldogs. And I worry about the Gamecocks' ability to move the football against quality defenses. Will Muschamp's track record is not exactly, let's make a great offense, uh, an offense that can move the football against this uh, outstanding D. That was a problem for him in his last stop. They will be a problem with it for him in this game against that nasty, feisty Georgia defense. Okay. Uh, now we have Iowa and Iowa State. Uh, four and 47. It was a shootout last year. Went to overtime. 44-41 in that one. And uh, Iowa got the W on the road at Iowa State. This one, uh, Iowa's at home. Now they played Northern Illinois last week. They led three to nothing at the half. Then they ran them out in the second half. It's a pretty good program as they ran out Northern Illinois in the second half there. And Iowa State, after you had you know night, like 20 weather delays in this game, Iowa State got going, and then the game was canceled there, so they don't have that game under their belt as well. I have no opinion, but this is a good rivalry, and usually the games are close. Well, yeah, when you talk about your basic rules, rivalry game, uh, if you're going to lay points, you better have a darn good reason. We're not in that situation here necessarily for the Iowa Hawkeyes. When you look at the quarterback play, when I'm laying points, generally I want the team with the better quarterback. You watch Nathan Stanley last week for the Hawkeyes, you know Iowa does not have the better of the two quarterbacks. So two situations where, yeah, my conventional wisdom, my prevailing wisdom is I don't want the favorite in this ballgame. That being said, we talk about line value. Iowa's pretty much the same team that they've been in terms of a power rating number for the last four or five years. I haven't changed them a whole lot. They've been very, very consistent. Iowa State's certainly better than they were a couple of years ago. But when Iowa State was here two years ago, minus 15. Now it's minus four. Iowa's uh-huh. the same. If you think the Cyclones are 11 points better than they were, bet on them. Or more than 11 points better. For me, it's an interesting game to consider. Not a game I'm going to wager on. All right. Haven't beat them since 2014. Uh, Clemson lane 12 and 54 at A&M. You got the battle between Bryant and Lawrence, both teams off uh, cupcake as well last week. A lot of points to be laying for a team in SEC country as Jimbo was uh, has been terrific as a dog as well, catching a lot of points here. What do you think of Clemson and A&M? This is a game, I mean, 54 to me seems a little bit low uh, for this total, even though we know how good Clemson's defense is. It feels like the Aggies are going to try to throw the football around a fair bit in Jimbo's debut. And of course, you know, the Florida State faithful who ran him out of town. Well, guess what? The new guy, uh, not a great debut uh, either, but someone, you know, you're ugly. Yeah. Your, your days of getting point spread value with the Clemson Tigers have probably come and gone. They've been an excellent point spread team over the last five years. Looking at this number, minus 12 and 54. I'll tell you flat out. I don't play a lot of Clemson games. I don't play a lot of Alabama games. I don't play a lot of Georgia games. The elite teams, it's hard to get to the window with them. And boy, it's hard to step in front of them. This is one I will be watching. I will not be wagering on. All right. We've we'll got four more games. We'll do a two-pack. Penn State, 9-56 and 56 at Pitt. Penn State lucky to survive as a huge favorite at home against App State. The defense was horrendous in the second half. App State could have won that game as McSorley took them down the field. And then they won in overtime. Maybe the uh, pick can be live in this one. I like it over the total. And B, good game late. BYU, three at home against Cal, 46 and a half the total. The BYU offense has been dreadful the last two years, but they go into Arizona, Tucson, and win as two touchdown dogs. They led 28 to 10 in that game before uh, two late Arizona touchdowns, and they shut down Tate completely in that game. Good win for Sataki and BYU. And Cal, Wilcox has done an excellent job coming over. Under Sonny Dykes, they couldn't stop anything. And they they were not impressive. I watched that game. They were not impressive against North Carolina. Open five and a half, close seven and a half, and landed seven. North Carolina got in the back door with that touchdown. But they had a ton of suspensions as well with selling the shoes. Wasn't impressed even though Cal got the win at home. 
Yeah, let's start with Trace McSorley uh, and Penn State. Because, look, App State had the, uh, what well, they have, the, the onside kick recovery, which made a big difference in that comeback and nothing to do with anything that, you know, Penn State special teams botched the play. Uh, but McSorley, game on the line, he was brilliant for the Nittany Lions. And again, that's App State. Uh, but when you look at Pitt's secondary, uh, there are some holes. Makes me a little bit nervous. I lean Pitt. I did not get uh, to the window in that one. And boy, BYU, there's one team that I upgraded my power rating on after week one. It was BYU. They physically manhandled Arizona and a team coming off, what, a four and eight campaign, a disaster season. Satake had them ready to go and they are bigger and more physical than Cal. That could be a concern for Justin Wilcox and company. Yes. Also, this is one of the, this is the ultimate body clock game. 7.45 7.45 on ESPN, 7.45 Pacific, 10.45 for the Michigan State kids. There's six in Tempe in the desert against Arizona State. I laughed at the hire, but they roughed up Texas San Antonio last week. They have a good quarterback with Wilkins. I want D'Antonio as the dog, not the favorite. I will see if that defense can bounce back after giving up 31 at home to Utah State. They almost lost as a 24-point favorite. Michigan State, six on the road. And Stanford at home against USC. Stanford, five and a half. This number's gone up, opened, I think, four, three and a half, five and a half, 56 and a half the total. Costello was terrific last week, Teddy. My guy, 332 and four touchdowns. San Diego State sold out to stop Love, and they did. Held him to 20 yards. Whiteside, big wide receiver, 226 and three scores in the three touchdown win. Uh, USC got by UNLV, didn't cover, led by five late in the third quarter at home. They have starting an 18-year-old freshman quarterback who's making his first road start. Yeah, although the freshman quarterback has gotten uh, rave reviews, and he made a handful of plays last week in the fourth quarter uh, for uh, USC, but certainly a rare double revenge spot because Stanford lost to USC not once last year. They lost in the regular season. They also lost them by a field goal in the Pac-12 title game. This time around, the Cardinal get the Trojans Mm -hmm. on their home field. USC, by the way, under Clay Helton as an underdog, about one and eight straight up, one and eight oh. uh, ATS. Like the show? Help us keep the lights on. Please make sure to comment, share, and subscribe to all the Sportsbook Review videos. Thanks so much. Best of luck. Enjoy the games.